talking about how nice it is today. And I was like, yo, it's supposed to be 83 degrees. And I was like, let's go swimming. And there, uh, Sam said, I don't have a beach bod. And I said, he said, that that's only, no. What do you, what did I say? No, I said, you don't need you a, don't beach have to have a beach bod to go yeah. swimming. And he's like, that's what skinny people say. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm no twig in an olive branch. No, he said, no, he no, didn't he say that. Said, I'm no that. skinny twig on the olive branch myself. We said, whoa. And he said berries. He said twig and berries. No, and now, you're, said, now, you're hey, lying. Yo. now you're lying. Now you're lying. You didn't have the berries, but I didn't oh have the berry God. part. Yeah, he said berries. I was like, yo. <laughs> that would have been no a little berries dangerous if he added the berries. <laughs> Sam is adding the berries. I, I can... heard berries. No, that, so I was and like, you're hearing wrong. Yo. Well, we got to record it, so we'll go back, and this is going to be in the episode. I'm already recording, so. Yeah, and we're going to find it. when you Yeah, we're going to find where we said berries. He's going to cut it out, man. And then, yeah, hey. he's gonna cut it out. And then when it doesn't happen, because it won't, <laughs> you owe me $5. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level oh, Podcast. No. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with... Um, uh, 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 Brandon, <laughs> Sam, Ivy, Ivy, oh! 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 we got Ivy on an episode. This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh my god, I... Ivy, how you been? Good, a little sick, but good. <laughs> oh, okay, how's the yes. butt soap? Awesome. And the <laughs> other soap. Business and is giggling. <laughs> Business is giggling, right? <laughs> yeah. So well, I'm really good. glad that Ivy could be on the episode today. Um, we did have to pay her a large amount of money to show yes. up. That's why yeah. it took so long because we we had to pull funds together because <laughs> big fee. We've never paid a guest before. This I'm in debt. Guest. I am in debt now. We are going in debt. The podcast <laughs> might be done after this episode. <laughs> No, no, not unless you like visit like Caleb Hammer or something, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do so you watch sure Caleb you... Hammer? <laughs> Ivy? No. 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 He's like, what would you say? He's like our generation's uh what's that guy's name? Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, the money guy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's okay. Like a millennial Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. With more yelling. Something. More yelling, yeah. and it's like I will say I like Caleb, but sometimes his yell turns into a whine for me. And I'm like, yeah. Caleb, mm. stop. <clears throat> Too much. Okay. Yeah. I'll take a listen. <laughs> yeah. The people that he has on his show is is pretty crazy. So if you want to feel good about your finances, you should watch it because you'll find there are people worse off than you. Yeah. <laughs> Of All course, right. Sam looks at it that way. I mean, I feel like a lot of people look at it that way, but a Sam's thousand like, percent people look at it that way because people are like, "Man, I'm broke," and then they watch that, they're like, "Oh, it could be worse." Yeah. It, well, worse. there was that episode where he, there was a girl though that kept saying, "Oh, it could be worse." He's like, "Stop saying yeah. that. <laughs> Quit saying that." But yeah, he could be kind of. I would never show up on that show though. I'm not getting embarrassed in front of millions of people like that. Yeah, and it's not even like a clout launcher, like. Like you are there because you're really bad with money, right? <laughs> no one's gonna follow you for anything. <laughs> I feel like it could be uh kind of harsh, though. Like this next story. Story. Oh, that's a wow. That's a transition. <laughs> Wait, did it make the noise or no? Wait, I didn't hit it. Okay, all Wait, right. Let me hit it. it. Hey. Why Wait. can only can only Maddie hear it? Yeah, I can't hear it. I don't you know guys, why she can hear it. I don't know why. I can... Yeah, I don't know Are why I can hear it. Because you're because you're deafened. Yeah, I'm deafened. <clears throat> Am I deafened? Yeah, I'm deafened. That's weird. Weird. Wait, are we shooting in the same? Is that what you say, Ivy? Are we shooting in the same house? Uh, what did I say? I said, are you sure that's what you heard? Oh, I'm You're the hearing only one hearing. Are you sure here? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, this isn't a good start. Wait. <laughs> Wait, is that a butt over Ivy's shoulder? That is. No. 
Okay, what? okay. <laughs> <This is fun. laughs> like, I saw it and I was like, that's a great I'm, butt. And then I, I moved know on. my butts. I know my butts. I'm like, that's a butt. <laughs> Them yams yamming today. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> can I get to the yams? <laughs> Sweet yams. Show me the way. Cause I got, got bills to pay. We all sang it together. It was harmony. Oh my gosh. How did it sound for Ivy? Cause it's like uneven or no? It was actually pretty beautiful. I'm trying not to cry. Oh my God. <laughs> Ivy coming in with the jokes. No, I think she was actually being serious. We oh. need to start a band. I've been saying this. We've been need to start a band cause we're good. Yeah. Sam's grasping at every straw to put me and him in a band and kick, kick Brandon out. So I don't think actually. I'm not kicking good. Brandon out. <laughs> you can't kick him out if he wasn't in it to start. Uh, okay, he's, so. He's the manager. <laughs> Brandon, what do you what do you have to say? This is wrong on this so many levels. my favorite thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> he's the manager. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this first story comes from r slash am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for thinking my wife's discipline is too harsh? My asshole. No. no, I mean, it's a thought, so you can think whatever you is want. Is it to a dog? No. It's to children. a person. A to children. <laughs> a human being. <laughs> <laughs> if it's to a dog, it's fine. If it's to <laughs> If it's to a dog, it could also be too harsh. Yes. That's Sam. Sam is not a dog person, and you can tell with his little comments. I am a dog. I love dogs. But sometimes you're a they... dog uncle. I am a I'm a, I'm a dunk. Sure. Yeah, you're dunkle. a uncle. <laughs> I am a dunkle. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm a dunkle. <laughs> am I the asshole for thinking my wife's discipline is too harsh? My wife and I have four kids, 13-year-old twins, eight-year-old, and a four-year-old. Postpartum depression with our last baby, she often struggles in a sense of her not being able to turn her brain off. She's been getting better, but she's still snappy at times. I currently work 12-hour overnight shifts five days a week, and she works 20 hours a week from home. Due to this, she has the kids constantly, and she's very, very touched out. Ever since she gave birth, our older three have been over-the-top clingy and seem to be reverting back to toddler stage. Like our daughter, one of the 13-year-old twins, earlier asked my wife how to plug in a microwave. Or all of a sudden, our 8-year-old is asking his mom to help him find clothes and tie his shoes for him again. It's a desperate cry for attention. We're in therapy, both individual and family therapy, and the therapist is helping us work through this, but it seems to be getting worse. Like, we can't even plan a family outing without the three older kids, either griping on their mother or walking so close in front of her or behind her that they're tripping her and refuse to watch out when told so. So it has absolutely been hell. But like I said, we're trying to work through this with therapy. Well, two weeks ago, my wife implicated a rule that no one was allowed to talk to her when she had her headphones in or when she was taking a shower. As I'm sure you guessed already, the kids were even bugging her endlessly during those times, and my wife stated that she needs a fucking break and silence for people to stop hanging off her arm. She even snapped the other day saying, can none of you do anything for yourselves? No, why don't I wipe your asses for you while I'm at it? Because our son, 13-year-old twin, asked her where his cup was instead of moving the coffee pot to look for himself, and then asked her at the same time how to make his mac and cheese despite knowing how, because yours tastes better, which is true. She was in the middle of feeding the baby, so she snapped. Anyways, now no one is allowed to bug her under any circumstances when she's showering or when she has headphones in, maybe once a week for the headphones and showering every other day for maybe 10 minutes or so is not a huge ask. Anyways, I get a text from my son earlier saying, mom is grounding us and taking our stuff away for a week and then zero response. I go home about an hour later and my wife is livid. All of the kids' electronics are piled on the counter and all of the kids are in their bedrooms with the door shut. I asked what happened and she said that she went to take a shower and the kids came in five times in a 10 minute period. So she grounded them from everything for a week and sent them to their rooms. I feel she's being too harsh because I know they just want her attention. Now she's pissed at me for making her feel bad for needing a fucking minute to herself. Am I the asshole? Wait, Maddie, did you get this? from the message and read it what do you mean 
I guess it's just a coincidence. A comforter sent us a message with this story saying we should read this story. They're from the Netherlands. Shout out. <laughs> what? From the Netherlands. Yeah, it's, Shout it's out. Like a couple days ago, this same story. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> Educational bill. Medium bed from our our Reddit sent us this. Like we should read this because they think it's a crazy story. Oh yeah, I might have I might have seen it and clicked on it from there because I've seen some people click on some stuff, but I think I got it from r slash Am I the Devil, Ooh. and uh, and then they just link other stories where people are are the asshole. Yeah. Sh sh spoiler spoiler warning spoiler alert. I guess. I, I don't think there's. <laughs> I think he's a pretty good guy. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I think she is. It sounds like she is home with the kids a lot, mm -hmm. has to work. The husband probably gets home from work and is tired and is asking her questions. And she spent every you know waking moment with little things, touching her, asking her questions. It's like, she you can't tune that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, like, I understand that. And then like, there's... <sighs> I think we're the only like country I think that that doesn't have like a community of people to help raise children. Mm -hmm. So she's doing it all by herself. Like she she is a mom, she's a nurse, she's, you know, a chef, you know, she's got all this stuff that she has to do that she doesn't get paid for. She gets no compensation whatsoever except, you know, those one or two little moments in the day where her kids, you know, give her a hug or say they love her, you know, and then, yeah. and then it kind of feels worth it. Um, but I, I get, especially if she has, if she's neurotypical, you know, with the touch and the sound that stacks up, stacks up, and there's no releasing that until you explode. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that. I think the husband should just try to understand her daily situation and it might be easier for other people to, to deal with it and maybe see if you know she has siblings or a grandparent or someone that can just come over and give her an hour break like you would at work you know mm -hmm. and when he comes home let her decompress for 15 20 minutes go take a drive right and take the kids and let her just chill for a minute and i swear she'll come back and be okay <laughs> maybe she might come back <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's interesting to me that he's like detailing all these things like she's she has a part-time job she's got to deal with other kids she's cooking and cleaning they're all over clambering and climbing on her they're feeling more needy because there's a baby in there and it's like yeah. the way he's describing it i'm like this sounds awful but he's like seems like he's just sitting there watching it like, yeah he's like she's like exactly help me she's drowning here and he's like man that's crazy and then she kind of snapped at her kids is that crazy that she did that you're like what are you doing bud that's very this behavior for like, sure what are you doing just help her for a bit give her a break but he's like i think my wife might be too harsh to the kids because they're like literally climbing across her body <laughs> like going around me like he's not doing anything so yeah you're the asshole dad help her he's just sitting in the recliner like writing this out he's like guys yeah. i think there's something wrong with her <laughs> yeah. Can you keep it down? I'm trying to write a Reddit about your I mom. can't focus. <laughs> your asshole mom. <laughs> trying yeah. to the kids, man. <laughs> I'm doing the hard work for you. <laughs> I'm trying to get help for us, honey. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think she's, it sounds like she's really overstimulated. And that's the one thing that kind of scares me about being a mom is if like you're saying you don't have a community of people to help you how it can like you never get time for yourself and you just always have like somebody who who needs your attention and stuff and I feel like it can be really overwhelming really quickly if you don't have help and so definitely having a part like, partner that's described in the story it is really frustrating to hear because it's like not only do I have to deal with the kids but like 
I feel like she gave up. I don't even, she hasn't even like mentioned like him helping her. I wonder if she like <laughs> gave up on him being a part of helping to take care of the kids. She's like, no, he just provides for the monetary aspect for most of it. And then I raise the kids because that's what we agreed to. But it just seems really like exhausting and frustrating. And I, I really think that um like Ivy's uh, notes would probably be really good to just give her a break. That, But the fact that he doesn't even see a problem with the 10 minute shower, they came in five minutes. <laughs> Within a 10 minute shower. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, Why'd you take their you grounded them for a week? It's like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they I need... did. Yeah, so it just sounds completely like, what's, frustrating. What's the benefit? I'm like, this should be the one benefit of being a single parent versus a, a parent with a couple, like mother mm -hmm, and dad. Mm -hmm. We have two people now, but it's like I'm basically still a single mom mm -hmm. in a relationship <laughs> while this guy is writing Reddit stories about our lives. Sitting yeah. in the recliner, drinking a beer. Yeah, this is hell. This is worse than being a single parent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all the stipulations that they had, I was like, this is not enough. Like, mm. <laughs> she's been raising them all day, and she only gets a 10 to 20 minutes. No. Give her the whole evening. Let's what? Not get wild. Let's not get crazy. No, 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 we have I to. Gotta dr I have to drink like a full six pack. So how am I going to do that? If yeah, no. Nah. Nah, you're going to be fine without that six pack. No, buddy. she has the entire night. Then what am I going to do with the six pack? I can't drink it and watch the kids. You don't even need it. I do need it. That's why I decompress. Mm -mm. Nope. I That's another thing too, is like, alcohol. she technically works from home. Uh, Well, she, well, she works from home, but also like she's, like Ivy mentioned, she's a caretaker. She's the chef. She's the one who like cleans and everything. So she's not getting a break. Like her place of peace to recharge is where she works. Right. So even the fact that it's like, yeah, you work 20 hours a week or how many days do you work? 12 hours, five days a week. Like there still needs to be time where he gets two days off of work and she doesn't get any days off of work. Wait, it was 12 hours? Yeah, I think he has 12 oh, hour shifts, five days a week. That's a 60 hours. That's actually. That's a lot. That changes but a she's there process. 24 hours. Yeah, that's she's, still, you know, he should help her. But I'm like, dang, I didn't know he was working 60 hours. I thought it was a normal 40 hour week. But how many breaks does he get versus how many breaks does she get throughout a work day? Mandated three breaks for a 12 hour shift. That's yeah. long. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Well, that's more than she gets. She I'm gets sure. 115 at the end of the day. Yeah. Wait, that's she got to go to the bathroom, right? So when she go in the bathroom, that's her. No, you can't. That's those, no. kids those kids are right in. In. they're in there they're sitting <laughs> on your lap and you're like okay they're, they're like mom they have to pee first <laughs> <laughs> you just came because mommy wanted to go you're like no i have to go too <laughs> use the tub kid use the yeah. tub. <laughs> okay so here's top comment you're okay. the asshole and then in quotes it says i asked what happened and she said she went to take a shower and the kids came in five times in a 10 minute period. So she grounded them from everything for a week and sent them to their rooms. And they responded, your family has ceased to be functional, but it appears you are attempting to address it. However, walking in the bathroom while someone is showering is an invasion of privacy. And then another quote, I feel like she's being too harsh because I know they want her attention. And they say, I see, perhaps it's you needing to reconsider working a 12 hour overnight shift five days a week and sleeping all day and stepping up and being a parent and stop criticizing your wife when you are the absentee parent. I hear the views are always better from the cheap seats. Oh, oh my, oh my God. Oh my gosh, commenter. <laughs> wow. And then, uh, Somebody else said, I completely agree. The wife is essentially working 168 hours a week because with a newborn, there's really no time off. He works 60 hours a week. He has it easy. I worry that his weaponized incompetence has rubbed off on the children, which is why they act so needy. Um, and then somebody else commented with a quote about the weaponized incompetence. And they said, yeah, a 13-year-old asking how to plug something in, there's no question about that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> which, yeah, that would be really... If my kids start asking me questions like that, I think I I, I don't even know how I would respond because it depends on like how many times they're asking it and yeah. how serious they are. I'm like, are you serious right now? Because <laughs> can like... we hit kids now? Can what? Can we hit kids now? I'm probably not. I'm not going to hit. I don't think I'm going to hit my kids. Yeah, we talked about this. You're probably not. 
but I'm like back when I I could get hit. So if I ask more than one question, they're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, yeah, no, I. <laughs> So you slam the child. <laughs> it's a quick little body slam. Did I, I tell like... you guys my mom body slammed? Uh, no. Group, yeah. Hold on, let's a... describe the size of Ivy. This man is ginormous. Yeah, six five, six six, and my mom is like five ten, and yeah. he was a teenager. I think he was like. 17 18 he said something to her and she just picked him up and body slammed him and, for her. and so i'm like when i'm like 10 years old i'm in fear i'm like this woman <laughs> nothing can stop this woman she actually is a monster <laughs> she can't be stopped so i didn't do anything from that point i was the best kid there ever could be <laughs> You saw her potential. Yeah, I'm like, she's body slam. <laughs> this man is the biggest man I've seen in my life. <laughs> and she picked him up like a thimble and threw him into the ground. So you have no idea what he said to her? I don't know. And he loves her. Every time he sees her, oh, you got him like, because that's his fear. It's like fear when he sees he her. Like he doesn't want He doesn't want to <laughs> happen again. Yeah. So shout out my mom. I know you're watching this. I'm still scared, honestly. And that's why she hasn't been on the podcast because Maddie's scared of her. No, that's not true. You keep yeah. starting all these rumors. <laughs> Your mom lives in Texas, so it's like we never... Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's the Texas thing and also because you're afraid. How many, no, how many no. stories is this dude going to spread? Because his mom, I feel like I worry that his mom is like, wait, is that true? Because when we when we had the call with your mom like a few weeks ago, he like said that that's the only way that she's getting on the pod. And then she looks at me and I'm, and she was like, Maddie, is that really the only way I'm getting on the pod? And I'm like, I didn't say that your son who's yeah. a liar said that. <laughs> Whoa, hey, yo, I've never lied. No I mean, I've berries been, said I've lied that. sometimes. <laughs> you're I've lying about people. lying. How, how, you're lying about lying. Sam, get it together, dude. Bury Wait, this behavior. People say that I'm a liar, but since I've met Ivy and the conversation I have with Ivy, she's one of the biggest liars I've ever met. She <laughs> lies. Oh, so now we're deflecting. <laughs> now we're deflecting. Oh, okay. I'm just saying we got one of the biggest liars in the game gracing this Zoom right now, and I'm being attacked. Yes, because it's... Because... Um, exactly. It's, it's, like, hard to come <laughs> up with them, like, readily available. <laughs> <laughs> But as soon as I think of one, I'm about, to, I'm about to blast you as soon as I come up with one. You're lying. Because exactly. you, you have to make one up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even true. That's true. Okay. You know one thing that I, what I always say is true on the podcast? That I don't have a father. Like this, this next, next story! story! That's a transition. That's how you transition, baby. Let's get in the game. <laughs> Who's my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? Sam, Sam, it's <laughs> who is Maddie? Sam, is it's stop. Like, we gotta, Guys, I'm alone here. There's no one here. I'm scared. <laughs> we usually do this in person where you guys can, Sam, hug you me, gotta, and you there's gotta no chill. one here. Sam, you gotta relax. Okay, you gotta that's relax. Fine. oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> who's my dad? My He's Sam, 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 please, please. <laughs> okay. Sam. it was my okay. fault. My bad, my bad. Okay. We're good. Come on, yeah. Brandon. Um, okay, oh so God. this oh Sam. Sam. Uh there, 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 there. <laughs> there, 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 no, there, now. there. <laughs> okay, so this cousin. next cousin. Yeah. This <laughs> next <laughs> da. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, my knuckles is ashy. Oh, good lord. Not the oh, not the nice. knuckle reveal. Oh, I can't stop looking at the butt. I'm being real. I like I look at the butt <laughs> a lot. That's his center point for today. Yes. Yeah, no, the... Sam, you can't huff it. I oh oh. <laughs> Y'all want to bring it up again? Like I, feel I like didn't the, bring it up. I feel like the comments are turning against me. Like you do not realize how important 
but huffing is to our friendship group. No. <laughs> and mm. now it's like I'm the spokesperson no. for it, but we all like butt huffing. No, no. no. I've had conversations with both Maddie, Brandon, never, and never frankly happened. Ivy as well about <laughs> butt huffing and about their love of butt huffing. She just called you out for I, it. And no, how that's I'm crazy like, because I Ivy said you're gonna find something to lie about, and here we are. I'll she, bring up. She, I'll bring up text messages, man. Y'all want receipts? I don't think hey, if you want receipts, follow me and DM me on Instagram. I will send you the receipts of <laughs> each of them talking about butt huffing and how much they love it. Is this no, your no, way of trying to get followers, Sam? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get. <laughs> well, you ain't gonna follow me to DM me. You, a lot of people are just DM me and not. Which I see you people DMing me and not following me. That's rude. That's rude. Maybe you need to post more about your butt huffing. Um, yeah, that is. That is. I right would thing. if I wouldn't get shamed for it. If my friends didn't back me up when I talk about it. When you, you don't really know your cousin that you're skipping out on. <laughs> <laughs> I got the receipt. So, okay, you guys, y'all all brave now, but y'all didn't know I had the receipts, huh? Show me those FaceTime crew. I need. I'll, I'll send it to you. Show them. Yeah. Because mm. do you easy. want me to? Because this, <laughs> unless right now. <laughs> Maddie cuts, Maddie's gonna cut it out probably. It's no, easy I, for anybody to do AI now. The so. butt huffing brigade joke is getting a little old, but I'll yeah. keep it in to show that you don't have any receipts. I just showed them. Maddie cut them out. It's not gonna be in the episode. People are like, I literally just showed everybody. <laughs> Maddie's um, gonna cut it out. So that's what sucks. Wow. It's the it's the censorship for me. I will literally show the timeline as I'm editing this to show that there's no <laughs> cuts in the timeline. Okay, she she's a magical editor. She can do anything. But he wasn't expecting me to edit the episode. But I'll show you guys the timeline just to show you guys the proof. So you see a lot of cuts, right? Right. But that's for camera shots. This is what we need to focus on. This is all the same. We did not leave anything out. He never showed the proof. Oh, nothing. Right now. <laughs> Maddie cuts, Maddie's gonna cut it out probably. It's easy right. for anybody to do AI now. The so, butt huffing brigade joke is getting a little old, but I'll yeah. keep it in to show that you don't have any receipts. I just showed them. Maddie cut them out. It's not gonna be in the episode. People are like, I literally just showed everybody. <laughs> This next story comes from r slash cover level pod, and it just oh! says, oh, and they just said, we wanted a baby together, but I don't think he wanted to be a father. General advice. Oh, 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 my gosh. We wanted a baby, but he didn't want to be a father. That's crazy. Did you just want to know what his kid would look like? And then I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's such a big investment. Just to see. <laughs> I use, bet. <laughs> use one of the apps, right? Those apps are pretty accurate. The baby apps. He's like, oh, he's going to be a really cute baby. Cool. No, they all look pretty ugly when you're bored. <laughs> right? Thank you, Ivy, for saying it. I've never seen a cute baby. <laughs> um, yeah. I have also heard that white babies in particular are ugly. Would you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, can say, like I couldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you said it before yeah. you and SJ have said it before and I was like I need to talk to I need. Can, is there anybody else we can bring in the room that can agree like S, to this S J said I didn't say it I was <laughs> well, what SJ says is law like it's yeah. Like, yeah SJ can yeah. say anything and everybody's like yes white babies are not good <laughs> whoa I don't think that's what she said <laughs> yeah I thought that's what she said white babies aren't good you're kind of like, misquoting and I was like that's wild SJ that you said that I think uh, once white babies get to like two months in there, but that first month, oh, only a parent can love that. So let's go back to what you said, though. You said white babies aren't good. You didn't. And that's what SJ had said. I'm just repeating. No, what, what? that's what you said. Shout out SJ. Sam's going to get canceled for that. <laughs> <laughs> White babies become good at two months, and everyone knows that. Committing crimes at one. Month. Yeah. So yeah, one month just delinquents. Arson. Yeah. So boss baby's real. Yeah, boss baby's <laughs> absolutely real. That's a documentary about a white baby. Because <laughs> because the the main character was about a white baby committing like um what's that type of business fraud where they like Larceny. embezzlement and stuff. Yeah, like, he's that's embezzling. All he Trading tax secrets, secret yeah. about the business. Tax but evasion. then 
yeah really yeah. bad stuff and then two months they're like reformed yeah but no okay. one talks about it i'm so glad boss baby was made to really highlight that part of the white baby um time frame it's an huh. important film <clears throat> yeah a very important film mm. okay so the story <laughs> yeah the story? the story yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. All we right. got so off the rails wait I'm... is this still father I don't even know where we're at anymore. <laughs> we're still on father. Uh, okay, so we wanted a baby together, but I don't think he wanted to be a father. For starters, I love this podcast so much. I saw several clips on TikTok of you guys and finally came to listen. I have now listened to every episode. Mm-hmm. Listening to you guys has given I'm me so a lot sorry. of... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to you guys has given me a lot of much-needed company when I stopped working at the end of my pregnancy. Love y'all's insight. I posted this on r slash relationship advice, but I also wanted to see about y'all's insight about my situation. I, 25 female, just had a baby three weeks ago. My partner, 33 male, just took off a month for paternity leave. We'll call him LJ for easy listening. LJ and I had a baby together pretty early in our relationship. We began trying, but a lot of problems came up between us, so we decided to wait for children and work on our relationship more. Of course, as soon as we decide to stop trying, we end up getting pregnant anyways. Mm. Things leading up to our son's birth were really hard. I had a lot of issues with LJ's lifestyle. He drank on excess every single night and mixed it with Kratom. It caused him to sleepwalk. He would pee all over the bathroom floor at night and not even realize When I would mention it the next day, he would not clean the urine off the floor. On LJ's days off, he would sleep the day away and drink at night, and he would repeat with sleepwalking. Our sex life practically faded away. The combination of substances made him unable to get hard. With him doing it nightly, we weren't having sex anymore. During this time, I was working full-time, pregnant, taking care of all the household chores and our pets. I admittedly would explode and be angry with him for feeling like I was doing everything. He paid for rent and utilities, and I was working to get my debt down and get ahead on my bills so maternity leave wasn't detrimental financially. After months of struggling, we finally decided to take it a day at a time and figure things out once the baby was born. I had so much anxiety leading up to his birth, and I wasn't sure if I could actually trust LJ, if he would be safe to keep around the baby, if he would actually even help me. Now the baby is here, and I initially was blown away. LJ stopped drinking and taking Kratom. He was super helpful and did whatever I asked him to do. Now it's been three weeks, and it's just that. He does what I ask him to do, and only that. And I have Mm. to specifically tell him to do a chore every time. He also picked up Kratom again. My recovery has been smooth sailing, so I returned to my normal routine pretty quickly with baby duties added in the mix, I am the only one who does the dishes. I am the only one running laundry, cleaning the floor, taking out the trash, feeding our pets. He will take out the trash if asked to. He picks up dinner too, but that's it. At night, he doesn't wake up if the baby cries. I have to wake him up to ask for help, which I only ask for diaper changes because the one time I did ask him to feed our baby, the baby was fussing and instead of him soothing him, LJ just got frustrated and put him back in the bassinet, still crying. LJ then climbed into bed and ignored him. I had to get up to calm the baby down before setting him back to bed. I'm breastfeeding, so I have to pump every two hours to keep my supply ready. That includes pumping every two hours, even at night. So I am pumping, cleaning my pump parts, and feeding my baby every two hours during the night. And all LJ does is change diapers when woken up and asked to. LJ's also began staying up late, like until 4 a.m. playing video games every night. Sometimes I will take the baby out to him at night for feedings and he'll help there. But once LJ gets to bed, it's only diaper duty for him. And the other thing that has really gotten to me is his masturbation habits. LJ likes to close himself off in our room sometimes to watch porn. And he'll be gone for at least an hour when he does this. A few days ago, he went to watch porn and came out of the room after 20 minutes to get his computer charger. I was dressed and getting ready to take the baby to the park when he asked and I told him that would make our baby's first time going to the park lj only asked what park we were going to and wished us fun and then returned to his room to you know and i was devastated the time he spends with us is becoming less and less as he begins to stay up late at night to play his game and sleeps in through the day for fucking up his sleep schedule affection between us is only initiated by me even at night he doesn't cuddle with me or hug me i've been struggling with postpartum depression and now i'm meds but he only gives me support if i host a conversation and volunteer to share how i feel 
He doesn't check in or ask how I'm doing or if I need anything. I go to the bathroom with the baby around 10 p.m. every night and LJ will not check on us a single time. Even if the baby gets fussy and cries, as I have said here several times, I have to take the baby out to him and ask for help. I finally brought up the issues and quickly exploded from frustration. He said I'm getting too angry over things that aren't worth being angry about. He said that he pays the rent and does the chores on his own time, that he was fine before I came around. And my rebuttal was the fact that we share a home together and duties shouldn't be outlined since we're both adults. He said that I should tell him what chores are his, but I have done that already and he still wasn't taking the initiative to take care of those things unless I instructed him to. I feel like all this is wrong, but it's so hard to sort through all these things. I keep second guessing myself, but I keep just wishing I was treated better, that it should be better than this. Some insight would be great because I'm struggling with the postpartum hormone plumpet and sleep deprivation and baby care. It sounds like you're raising not even two babies. Like, this guy sucks. That's what I was going to say. Oh, that yeah. wasn't a part of the story. Okay, yeah. No, yeah. No, I... I was like, that's a weird ending to it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the actual ending was her yeah. talking about all the things that sh oh, she okay. was struggling with. Okay. Which I'm not surprised that you're struggling with all this because you have no freaking help. And if anything, you have somebody who's making a mess that you have to clean up in a lot of ways. Uh, it almost sounds like from the first story, like this is her side of the story. <laughs> of <laughs> The guy's like, man, she's like really mean. And then he, she's like, I need help. Someone help me. Uh, I mean, it sucks. There's like different levels of people that could be better parents because i i know the dad in the first one can be an asshole because he really was not putting in nearly as much work as the the mom right but he is still in ways trying to be better with this guy right. i don't even know about this dude um was they're showing signs of this before the relationship I think there was. She mentioned that they were trying for for a baby and then she said something about something happened and they just wanted to stop um she said we were pretty early we wanted a baby pretty early in our relationship we began trying but a lot of problems came up between us so we decided to wait for children and work on a relationship more of course as soon as we decided to stop trying we ended up getting pregnant anyways so yeah problems are him probably <laughs> probably just him yeah <laughs> yeah because i don't kid like that like do you want your kid to see like that's how i should treat my future partners you know like right yeah that's how i should treat my mom mm -hmm. is like a like a moody teenager that has no structure like yeah yuck yeah <laughs> seriously because what is what does kratom do to you it's I, okay so i was looking it up it's like an opioid i think yeah it's an opioid yeah I think oh. it's something that people take that's similar effects of like uh like prescription drugs. Okay. It, yeah. Kratom commonly referred to as an herbal substance that can produce opioid and stimulant like effects. Oh, so it's natural. Uh it's currently legal and accessible in many areas, though US and international agencies continue to review emerging evidence to inform Kratom policy. So yeah. Everybody reach under the chairs. I got you all crazy. Oh. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, so people who use Kratom uh, both have things like increased energy, alertness, and rapid heart rate, and effects mm. that are similar to opio opioids and sedatives, relaxation, pain relief, confusion. Well, many people who use Kratom report the smaller doses of Kratom produce stimulants-like effects and larger doses produce opioid or sedative-like effects. Studies have not yet established that these effects depend on the amount or the method of Kratom consumed. Mm. Where's mm. his energy coming from? I know. I'm like, he, I feel like he must take the, potentially from what they're saying, he might take a lot of it, which is okay, why he has the relaxation, okay. pain relief, and he's confusion. Very, he's very relaxed. Yeah, but not to not to harp on it too much because it doesn't help OP that much because it's already happened. You already have a baby. But just from past experiences, I've had some friends who like had similar conversations of having kids early in the relationship, which I think is not the smartest thing to do. You mm -hmm. have literal no insight of who the person is. You're the what you're seeing already is probably the best version of them because they're 
not trying to scare you away. So making a decision that make a lifelong decision of having someone with a kid off a couple months of a relationship, I think is a bad idea. And mm -hmm. this kind of highlights that. But I don't want to demonize OP, but just for people, other people thinking about like, I want to have kids and I'll have it with the first person who's nice to me. This is how it will usually end up. Mm -hmm. Because you don't you don't know how they're gonna be in stressful situations like having a child and having to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I just so that's the one thing that like is like the struggle of there because there's some women now that say that they're like hey I just want to get with a man just to have a baby because I have money I don't want him in my life because I don't want to have to raise any like I don't want to have to raise him so I feel like there's some women who are like I just want the baby and I am financially able to support the baby by myself yeah single but mothers I, by choice yes but I also feel like um like in this situation it's kind of sucks because obviously OP needs to spend all of her time taking care of the baby I don't know if she has money raised up to be like okay this man's getting out of my house I'm right. gonna go get a job and I'm gonna send the baby to daycare or whatever or I have money that we can like live off of you know something where I feel like she's in a tricky situation yeah mm -hmm. it's like a trap sometimes like sometimes you're with a partner who can financially like it makes me think about the Risa Tisa story did you ever watch that IV on TikTok is it was the like woman a woman that, that had a relationship with a man and she got married to him and then she started finding out all this stuff? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, there was a part, you remember the part in the story where she was like, I knew he was lying to me, Sam. I knew he was lying to me, but I stayed with him because he was paying my car bill. He was paying for my bills. Yep. And yeah. I'm like, I feel, and she even said it to her else. She's like, I, she's like, I shot myself in the foot with that because it made me stay with him longer because I could not afford to live without him. And it mm -hmm. makes me think about this situation where it's like, obviously, like OP said, she didn't, the moment that she didn't want to have the baby anymore, she wanted to wait. Of course she gets pregnant, but it's like, she's kind of stuck. At least it feels like it. Of course, hopefully there's support for her somewhere else, but it, it probably feels like she's stuck because her financial support is this dude who doesn't help her in any other way. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why you should try not to get in this situation. Now what you got to do is make a difficult decision. Is his burden worth mm. the trouble you're going to go through when you get out of this? Preferably, you should get out of this. I yes. Think. You should not be in this situation. And I feel like it's going to be hard work doing whatever you're going to have to do to get out of this situation. Aren't there That's like I mean. a lot of programs that do help single mothers? Like, yeah, there's programs. Yes. Yeah. Are they married or not? Because if they're married and he makes enough money, then she won't be able to sign up for those services. Because they um, it doesn't seem like they were married. I don't think so. Okay, she might be able to then if she doesn't make a certain amount of money. It's all confusing and yeah, it's crazy the like the hoops you have to jump to just get help. Yeah, there, there are. I think every state has its own little thing you can ask for help, especially if you're like living with him. If you're like living yeah. with him at the mm -hmm. same time you're trying to get assistance, I know they frown upon that. Yeah. Because I feel like that's the best course of action. He's already shown who he is as a person. Mm -hmm. He's not going to change unless something drastic happens. Like, like the I child, like at this point, I think he kind of need he needs help for sure um he's addicted to a lot of a lot of different things and like that style that lifestyle is it's not going to get better unless you make the drastic change to go to like uh treat do a program or something like that so because i don't know it's just like i mean yes it's this seems like a not a cry for help but like I I feel like OP doesn't have a lot of resources. Like, you know, there's some people that ask the internet, but it's like they have friends, they have people, they have right. family members they can ask. But I think this might be her like only her last resort of trying to figure something out. 
And I just, I don't know, like saying like, don't get in the situation is like cool, but it's like she's in the situation. So like yeah. the practical thing is send him to an AA or wherever he needs to go. Not AA. What is it? I can't think of it. Like those programs, send him to a program. Yeah. If you want to be with him, send him to a program. But then you have to take time to like figure out what's um, best for you. Cause like, yeah, it's just that it's such a tough scenario, but you are literally supporting your baby and a person that's addicted. I, I don't even want to like downplay that. Like addiction is, is, is bad. It's, it's, it's probably to the point where it's he's not even in control of his own life anymore Mm -hmm. it's all the substances that are in control of him so it's like yeah i would say the best thing is probably to like try to get on those programs try to get away from him yeah it's just it's there's no point in holding the hope like let him find it for himself and if he can great if he can't hey you know, there's there's resources out there or at least try to find a community, some sort of community that can help you raise it because it does take a village to raise a child. So. What yeah, about people who, who said we've had other stories where people are like, um, well, you know, this is bad and we know you want to get out of it. Just yeah, take save the up. time, save up, take the time and just deal with the situation while you get on your feet and then leave. Yeah, because I think this could work for her. And at the very least, he's at least listening to her when she does have to tell him every single thing. But at least he is providing help when she tells him to. Mm-hmm. So maybe you stick it out for six months, a year. And like, I am going to tell him to do everything, but then I can get money together and get a place ready so I can eventually leave. Yeah, but it's not so bad that you're not in like in a violent situation or thing. It's just like really sad mentally and emotionally but at least you're in a safe place otherwise that maybe you can stick it out for a little bit and get those resources together hopefully because i feel like op is really at her like end like she was talking about the end like with sleep deprivation i mean she only had the baby three weeks ago so her body is literally freaking healing from having Mm -hmm. a baby and now she's raising the baby she's still doing all the chores like (sighs) Like, yeah, the fact that she already had to get up every two hours to to sleep, she's probably already struggling to get back to sleep. Right. And then it's like having to get up again because you're the only one who will take care of your baby because you're the father of the baby ignores the baby's cries. Like, I think I think realistically, OP, if you can stick through it, I, I think try and get some support. See what see what like, you know, Ivy and Brandon were saying, what what uh like community or like if there's any programs that are able to help you where you live but also potentially trying to save up like a fund to where you can move out or if there's any way if you still have some family that you're close to if you can relocate back to them like if there's anybody that you can fall back on because yeah i mean we haven't even we didn't even touch about like his like masturbation problem too like there's so much stuff that like I feel like she's living with like a roommate and she's asking the roommate for help. Like there is no way where this man is um, trying to have like a romantic relationship with his partner. Like he's ignoring her at every like corner. And even if he wanted to try and initiate like sex with her, she's probably not going to want to have sex with him because she's like overstimulated with the baby. Like she's just tired. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And him, Hopefully. like, openly masturbating, no, not openly, but, like, <laughs> oh my, oh, he was masturbating either. with the kids there, like, at, in the house with, while the mom's, like, taking, like, do that in your own time. Right, Wait right. Week, at least. Like, right. But it just seems like a whole snowball that's that's gonna... Yeah, go in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine him, like, Winnie the Pooh <laughs> yeah. out of the out of the bedroom. <laughs> I love it. Being like, have you seen my charger? You know where it is? I call it Daffy like... Ducking. Oh, Daffy Ducking? <laughs> yeah, I do like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> but no. It's, it's a good vibe. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got no berries, for sure. <laughs> no berries. <laughs> so he did that was Ivy's, that was Ivy's. 
Oh, okay. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Somebody does say something that OP responds to. And I'm going to read it, even though I've never read it before. Okay. okay. So here's a comment here. The big issues with your significant other, at least get one of those big family calendars on the wall and write out who is in charge of what chores on which days. That day, you don't have to resent him for doing chores without being told. He'll know which chores to do. OP said, I do like that idea, but I got in a calendar months ago just for us to coordinate on time better together, and he never looked at it. I would ask him to at least check it, and he never did. It may be worth revisiting for a chore calendar, though. <sighs> OP, please. Like that's like... What's She's up? She's got to do more work. Yeah, she has to do more work to get him to do a little thing. It's like a kid. You just have another kid. Yeah. But... Mm -hmm. she makes it, would, <laughs> it would be better just to be a single mom than that oh yeah <laughs> somebody else talks about how it just sounds like she's like suffering from like mental illness or uh maybe him i want to say first that your feelings are totally valid you're both adults and you should be splitting responsibilities equally regardless of whether or not you have a child. It's not your job to take care of him, and it's super frustrating that he put you in that position. But what you're describing also sounds like the actions of someone suffering from mental illness. Have you checked in with him about how he's doing emotionally since the baby, or even during your pregnancy? Have you guys talked at all about getting into couples therapy or else individual therapy to try and work on your mental health and emotional state as individuals and as a couple? I think a lot of this stuff might improve if you guys stopped talking about the problem and started talking about the roots of the problem. It sounds like maybe you're both suffering from depression, especially with a new baby, and that makes a relationship hard. And OP mm. responded, mental health has been a big topic I had brought up repeatedly, his mental health and my own. I checked in on him several times and I have said that I've been worried about him before and during my pregnancy. I felt like all of these issues were the result of him becoming depressed, but he continued saying that he was okay and happy. We agreed on couples therapy, but it fell through due to a flaky therapist, and we didn't revisit the topic. We oh. also agreed his paternity would leave a great time for him to start individual therapy. I've been going to therapy for years now, but stopped going towards the end of my pregnancy. I will be picking back up once things have settled more with the baby. I've asked him how he feels and tried to host open conversations, and he said that he feels happy. I don't really think that's the case with the constant chase for any type of escape, but nothing reaches him. I feel like he is in denial of where his mental health state is at, but I don't know what else I can do or say as his partner. And I don't know if I can push for our relationship anymore either after basically a year and a half of this. And I feel like with this comment, I definitely see what people are talking about with like potentially him having some mental health problems himself, especially with the escapism. But at what point is that her responsibility when that should be his? Like, I feel like mm -hmm. they are being like, maybe just be aware of this. And I'm like, yes, that's fair. Be aware of it, that your partner might be struggling with that. But that's something that he should be prioritizing. Like, you can't be prioritizing that for him. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and he's not always... ready to get help, then he's not going to. Yeah. He's not going to. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that she should basically issue him an ultimatum. Like this, like this next, next story. story. She should though. <laughs> okay, so this next one is from R slash Comfort Level Pod. Again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Am I the asshole for giving my fiance an ultimatum? We've talked about ultimatums on the pod before. Mm -hmm. I don't think people like them. No. Do we? I love a good ultimatum. I love the show. The ultimatum. I love the show, but the actual act of giving someone an ultimatum, no, no. But well, it's how not else a do fan. you tell them that you mean business? Stand on business. <laughs> yeah, it's the end of your rope, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be, it might be yeah. mental clarity for you to know clearly what they would choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I'll leave you, or you're dead. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. That was a harsh jump. Do this or you're dead. That was a no. To me. You're dead to me. That was you really late that. that you yeah. added that, Sam. No. Yeah, I, you were talking about murder. <laughs> no, I said dead to me. You said but dead. But you're like pausing. You're giving like a serious pause to it. 
Because I was adding gravitas to it. Mm. Well, or murder. <laughs> <laughs> We're married there. You sound like a one month old baby. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> I'm just a, just a criminal. <laughs> I'm just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a baby. I can't do anything wrong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have a gun, baby. How did you get that gun? I'm just a baby. <laughs> I'm just a baby. I get into things I don't know. <laughs> Wait, so were you guys all are we all white babies for the first month for a month of our lives and then after everyone's two months, a white baby, yeah. So we're all bad. All ba you're saying all babies are bad? Is that all a quote from Sam that I can quote in the Yeah. Okay. You can put that. Can you say it again one more time for me? Ah, you ain't gonna catch me like that. <laughs> you ain't gonna catch me like that. Uh, I almost did it. I got you. I almost got you there. Said, I almost got you there. Oh my god. <laughs> am I the asshole for giving my fiance an ultimatum? I, 30 year old male, am engaged to my fiance, 30 year old female, who okay. I've been dating since the beginning of 2020. We'll call her C. I'm an active duty army captain, been serving since 2012, and C works as a government contractor with a flexible schedule because she works remotely 80% of the time, required to show face once a week for at least an hour. We met at the height of the pandemic in Washington, D.C. towards the end of 2020. I was given orders to move to Arizona for training. The orders were expected, but not as soon as they came. This put C and I in a conundrum as we weren't fond on the idea of a long distance relationship. But we both felt like we had found something special in the relationship. Fast forward six months, and I'm doing everything that I can to get reassigned back to D.C., despite me not caring for the city. For context, C is from a rural town in Arizona and moved out to D.C. in 2017 for school. Since moving out to D.C., she has been adamant about never returning to a rural area. C is not fond of the idea of leaving D.C. anytime soon. Nevertheless, I'm doing all that I can to get back to D.C., which is not an easy feat. Those who serve in the military can attest that we're typically at the mercy of the needs of the Army. After doing six months of all I can to network back into the DMV, I'm given subsequent orders to Colorado. C and I are devastated since we both know she won't come out to where I am, and there's nothing I can do to immediately relocate to her location. The worst part is that the orders were for three years, meaning we're doomed to a long-distance relationship for at least three years. Another thing to consider is that one of my convictions slash conditions <laughs> is that I won't propose slash marry anyone unless I live with them first. Mm -hmm. I was engaged once before C, and I had to call the wedding off due to inconsolable differences. She cheated on me. At the moment of getting more orders, I promised C that I would continue to do all that I could to make sure my next orders were somewhere in the Northeast. In those three years, I did countless field exercises, combined training rotations in California and Louisiana, and a deployment. The three years were grueling and took a significant toll on me, both mentally and spiritually. During this time, C kept true to her word and remained in the Northeast. Nevertheless, I worked tirelessly to ensure that my evaluations were nothing short of exemplary to enable my eventual plea to be reassigned out east. Toward the end of my second year in Colorado, I was informed that I would be deployed and was debated that I would have to leave C for another year. With the news of deployment and our relationship hitting the three-year mark, I broke my own rule and asked for C's hand in marriage. Then I was sent off. Then on one faithful day in deployment, I got the word that I was selected for a nominated position out in Maryland. C and I were ecstatic. Not only were we going to be married in the next year, but we were also going to be finally living together after four long, grueling years. Hmm. Fast forward a year, and I returned from deployment. During that time I was away, C decided to move out of her apartment in Arlington to a pseudo-luxury apartment in Alexandria, Virginia. Ooh. She felt she was due for an upgrade. I was indifferent about her decision making as I didn't know if I would be assigned to New England and I didn't want it to be a reason why she didn't slash couldn't do something. So I encouraged her to go after what she wanted. Well, she gets the apartment and falls in love with it. Her words, not mine. This fact will be important later on in the story. Upon my return from my deployment, I worked to start scheduling my move to D.C. and start to deliberate where we're going to live as newlyweds. C has the idea of staying in her luxury apartment, but upgrading to a two-bedroom. I'm indifferent, so I agree. 
However, upon further research of my location on my new assignment in C's apartment, I realized there is approximately 35 miles between the locations or a two and a half hour round trip drive per day due to all the traffic. It's so crucial to note that the new position I was elected for is a rigorous program that only determines a maximum of eight captains per year, meaning I would have an overbearing workload through the week and then have to commute the two hours each day. I disclose this information to C and request that we work to find a place closer to work. This infuriates C as she claims to love the apartment and doesn't want to leave. She then entertains the notion of us living in separate apartments post the wedding for at least a year so that she can enjoy her luxury apartment. I in return tell her that if her love slash adoration for an apartment room is greater than the love and concern that she has for her future husband, then we should not get married. Am I the asshole for making the statement? He's not wrong, but I don't know. It sounds like they're not ready to get married. Yeah. I agree. They're working on their careers and everything, and their their lives are in two different areas, pretty much. And if he has this whole like, um, I refuse to get married before I live with someone, whatever, just then work, do your job, and when you are ready to live with someone, despite where they live and the, your differences and where you want to live, you know, you have to you have to meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. And if she's not willing to leave her apartment then you know maybe she's not ready to to share that with somebody yeah, yeah. I completely yeah. agree I was just thinking that I was like it doesn't even sound like they're ready to be in like a actual in-person relationship let alone be married mm. so I was yeah. like I mean I think this is maybe why so they're married wow that's crazy or they're almost married they're engaged, they're engaged. Yeah, yeah they're engaged yeah I mean I think yeah, I think I definitely agree with Ivy and just pull. I feel like you should pull back. I don't think yeah. I don't think she's ready and I don't think you should. I feel like maybe the love might be a little uneven technically, too, because he's willing to do all this stuff for her. He's willing to bend so far for her and she's not willing to bend at all, which doesn't yeah. necessarily. I don't know. It's still his side of the story. Like, we don't know fully yeah. what she's doing in the relationship. Yeah, but it, it does. It does seem one sided from like. He's moving posts to live close to her, and she's just like there. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. if you get married in the military, though, you can't you'd move together. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way you can move together is if you're married. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sign this contract. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, I think this whole like, like him saying that, yeah, it just shows shows ultimatums are not good <laughs> because it's the desired outcome like he wants op to do something she's like nah i'm not ready to do this ultimatum and when it, the the obvious answer is you guys just aren't ready in the moment like it's fine it's okay like take the time yeah, yeah. like just there's i saw this video and it was talking about how like some people won't some people won't break up just because it doesn't seem like it's it's not a big like some problems won't be big like like the past few stories those were big problems but it might be simple as wrong wrong person right time right person wrong time like those things are are very much a factor into if you should you know be together or not like the, you guys' lives are just not aligning right now and that's that's fine it's 2 hours away but it it's not aligned and i think I'm not saying you should break up but i don't know I it's just are. like <laughs> i don't think they need to break up but the whole throwing the ultimatum out there i don't think is necessarily right just because yeah you guys just aren't lining up right now who knows what could happen in a few years yeah but yeah and i think just the rush of wanting to be married and all that it just start easy make it easy just start easy yeah if you have to start with convoluted things just wait and i think the other thing to consider too is the fact that 
like you said, Sam, we're, we're not, we're only hearing his side of the story, but I think one big factor is the fact that she works 80% remote. Like, yeah. it's not like she's the one who's in the military. She's like, I cannot move from this apartment. Yeah. Well, how she nice can... is this apartment, though? It must be really nice. It has to be. It's it an amazing nice. apartment because she will not. I miss like, that. I miss I the whole leave. fact that she was remote. That's crazy. Hold on. <laughs> that does change a lot. But but this crazy. apartment, though. I feel like girls trying to live her life and enjoy what she has right now. Because mm-hmm. once she gets married, she could end up in the situation where the other stories. Yeah, it goes know? downhill. Yeah, she's got one nice and confidence, and she's got a slave around at the at the house, and you know, this she, guy's she's addicted to kratom. He's masturbating yeah. in the bedroom alone with only a shirt and on, and murdering people, Wait, and babies. Know. There's murder. I didn't. Do that. White babies, specifically. White babies <laughs> yeah, <I> th- it's... <laughs> um wait <laughs> i totally <laughs> lost my thought when we talked about the white babies taking kratom and murdering people i was like this is i crazy. didn't know about the murder part i was like <laughs> but you knew about the kratom part i didn't know about the kratom <laughs> oh my god how do you guys think i'm so lively on the podcast today oh no sponsor for the podcast no nope. <laughs> oh oh, oh, oh. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> <Censorship>. shit. <laughs> Mute his mic. <laughs> um. Well, what I was gonna say is, at least from what Ivy's saying, I totally agree. It sounds like the girl is living her life and she loves her life. Yeah. And if she's not, but the thing is, I'm like, if you're not ready for what he has because i think it will be more similar to it is going to be on her because he's in the military so he's going to be gone for long periods of time right i feel like that really does call for a lot of really strong women who can support basically like being a single parent while the other parent is overseas or doing something else and maybe that's not what she wants and maybe that's why she's like i want to be here i don't want to have to move around with you every few years like i want to be here so it's like maybe your guys's lives don't match at all and maybe you're just realizing that. And it was during COVID when people were a little bit more lonely and you found somebody to talk to that you didn't have to necessarily have physical relations with. Like, you're like, you're my friend who cares for me and wants the best for me and we can have a future together. But now that the futures are coming together, it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to go there. You know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I'd put a pin in it in the relationship. Yeah 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 so what does that mean putting a pin in it does that mean we're we're not together or oh it's pause either we're on a break well (laughs) (laughs) that could get messy (laughs) yeah i kind of agree with you guys i do think yeah they're not in the right times in their life at this moment but it almost seems like that's going to lead to a breakup because it's like if you pause it, if you're like, okay, we're paused in our respective cities, does that mean we're not like pursuing it? You either else? visit on the weekend, talk, you hang out if you yeah. can, you know, continue what you were doing during COVID. But now that you're, you know, essentially two ish hours away from each other, you can visit each other when you have the time. Yeah. And see if the relationship is worth saving after that point after doing those you know little dates and still talking and yeah continuing the friendship first you got to build the base first and then go up from there and if you know if it's too much you can't seem to find the time to hang out with each other then it might be okay to let them go in the romantic part of it and just stay stay friends if you can you know if you're not too heartbroken over it but let them just uh, <laughs> let them let them go if they're ready they'll come back mm-hmm. you know like circle around to it at the end you know yeah i, I think I'm that's the healthiest wo- answer i'm almost wondering too though if that might be hard considering the timing of it like who said it it was one of you guys like sunken costs or something yeah i don't know sam I, said I, that a few weeks ago and it's like the whole why well, I put so much time into it and now we're at this step. 
what is it? I forget who was talking about it, but they're like, engagement is not supposed to be like the step towards marriage. If anything, engagement's like, does this yes. really work out? Like engagement should push you away from being married if it's wrong. So yeah. I think if you look at it that way too, um, yeah, your decision will become a lot easier. Yeah, but I think we've talked about this before where people, I guess getting into the engagement when someone says no to you to a proposal or like they say it multiple times, you're like, is there is there a way forward in this relationship? Like if you're already engaged then you're like, okay, we need to step back because we're obviously at different points in our lives. We need to step back. Maybe we're not engaged anymore. Is there like still a path forward for that relationship where it can move forward? I think with two mature people, yes. But I'm just talking about with your average person. Can we be like, we were engaged, we're not engaged. We still actually have a future in this relationship with not one or the other or both of us getting angry about us going, quote unquote, backwards in our relationship. Postpone a wedding. You don't have to get married. You could stay engaged for years. You know, oh, it's yeah, not... that's true. Yeah. Yeah. We should do an act out. Okay. All oh, these the stories last... are so heavy. I think the well, last, the last story... one's not too bad. Yeah, the last story's not okay. bad. We ended on a whoo, not too heavy we can, story. We this can time. have <laughs> OP. We can have the girlfriends. We can have. Uh, who else? Luxury is apartment. <laughs> Somebody we in the have, apartment. No, we can have the apartment manager of this luxury apartment, and we can have the OP's boss of this of this new job thing. Someone in the okay. military who's like his boss. Okay. <laughs> so I want to okay. be the apartment manager. <laughs> no, I want to be the apartment. <laughs> okay, okay, Ivy's I the apartment manager. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll be no, Ivy, girlfriend. You, if you Brandon? insist. <laughs> Who are you, Brandon? I guess I could be OP. Okay, I'm the military leader guy. Okay, you don't have the sound, right? For this? No, I don't. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> is this part of the act out? OP is... Yeah, fine. I guess. Uh, ah. Uh... So much pain. I just got out of the six weeks of hell in the military. <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. Let me call my shoddy man. Let me call my shot. Do you do you enjoy in my life? Okay. Hello. Hey, I'm I'm out of the training. Hey, how long is this call going to be? Because I have a spa appointment in like two minutes. Is this the? How are you doing? Are you doing well? No, okay. I just had to make sure. Parker, you got two minutes left on that call. I just just make sure you were okay. um, Which was a weird response. You haven't seen me for like six months. So I love you. Anyway. um... Um, Yeah, so uh, I just. Get it together, Sergeant. One minute. Oh, no. Okay. I got to go in like a few minutes, but you know, like. I didn't say a few. I said one. I heard that. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I just have like a I steam. Go in a I just have like a steam room session in my apartment shower in a little bit. So do oh. you have time or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just wanted to say like, yo, like I might be deployed, you know, and I just wanted to see if you want to. The helicopter's like, coming now. We got to go. The helicopter's okay. coming now. Uh, we're getting okay. deployed right now. What do you need? <laughs> I just wanted to see if you wanted to move. Here's a and, gun. And take my hand, hand in marriage. Um, I have a gun uh, in my hand. Did you what? Wanna, you want to marry me? I don't know. Uh, but I, gotta, I have to go. But can like, we get married we, in my apartment? Let's go, Corporal. Let's yeah, go, Corporal. Okay. You've been demoted. Okay, yes, yes, I'll, yes, I'll do yes. it. Okay, cool. Bye. But the thing is, we're going to, like, I got to be deployed Hanging somewhere out. else. So, like, would you, like, want to be? Get in. I just hung up. I'm in, I'm in. Get to the chopper. We're still in America. What are you doing? 
do, 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 do. <laughs> cut away to the I put that on white baby. <laughs> <laughs> now we cut away to Maddie at the apartment building. Woo. Got my feet up. This is nice. Oh, I have a text from the apartment manager. I paid. Okay, let me call her. Hello? Hello? Hey, I just want you to know I paid rent for the next six months. I saw that. Awesome. You know, that's like, it's like a contract for like two years, though. Oh, now I can do that. How much is it? Um, probably your firstborn. Oh, okay. Well, I'm getting married soon, so I think that would be okay. I can do that. How, when do you okay. need it by, though? Because I need like eight months to do it, and I have six months paid, so. Okay, all right. That mm, We can work something out. As long I could as, probably as long get as... in, I could probably have a baby early, get her in the NICU soon, so. Yeah, I mean, you could probably just find one. Uh, I'll find, fine. yeah. Wait, I'll is do this, that. Is this your girl's apartment? <laughs> Oh, oh, my yeah, yeah, oh, my that one. Let's oh my that one. Hands up, hands up. No, hands up. Sorry, please. 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 Let's get out of here. Let's go. No. Go, Ben's a Barbie. It means so much to her. But not that one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that bullet the air apartment was destroyed but we have a two bedroom apartment <laughs> thank god for my bulletproof chest uh <laughs> vest oh well, her chest is really good for you well actually yeah, I, I did I get my that. boobs done and i have they're I bulletproof that the so that's actually good too i got i got bulletproof boobs i got a bulletproof boob job so girl living her life yep <laughs> uh so you had, wait you said there's a two bedroom available yes yes there's how many bedroom. babies is that worth one and a half that's okay okay i'm gonna go find two babies right now i'm probably gonna bring you two as like a tip like just thank you because yeah oh yeah Whew. And maybe okay. your future husband can move in too i don't think we need to do that but we'll we'll consider it i appreciate okay. the um, hello um okay thanks bye hey op oh, hey hello op <laughs> yeah uh it's weird i don't know who that lady you were talking to about our apartment buildings that is a homeless woman who just came into the building and answered. So if you're talking about selling babies, so that's not something we do. We take cash. We only take cash and money. Um, I'm going to find that woman. She ran out as soon as I got on the phone. Um, I have one. Oh, my God. We don't. We want money. That is a hairy have, baby. That wait, is such a hairy baby. Wait, what are we talking about here? Wait, who are you? I'm OB. <laughs> Bye. Here's the baby. <laughs> oh, oh my no. god, give me that baby right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god, if Husker had appeared in the other shot, I was about to freak out. <laughs> I was like, how is that? <laughs> They're in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big reveal. Maddie and Ivy are in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh my god. <laughs> And see, and see, that's beautiful. One of our best ones. So, Ivy, how do you feel? You are first. Actually, you're not the first comforter to be on the show. You didn't have to say that. Well, yeah, you're, yeah. you're the first comforter. Okay, I say it, even though we're lying. Uh, How's it feel to be on the show? Woo! It's fun. <laughs> It was fun I, having you on. Yeah. It was fun. I think it was our worst episode we've ever done. But no, I think it's like, one of our greats. What are you going to be able to do about that? It's definitely well, not going to make it. Obviously. It's, it's always the opposite of what he says. So. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Oh, no, you guys figured me out. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to start telling the truth. <laughs> now I got to tell the truth now so people think I'm lying. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> And with that, we will oh. see you guys next week. We gotta get out of here. Bye. <laughs> Bye.